it just seems like it was something that we were trying to do since uh, at the end of last year, to be quite honest with you, it was a disappointing finish for us. Um, our captains, uh, right from the get-go, right from last year, took the team and uh, really guided it right to this point, I'd say. Uh, so, uh, you know, we played, uh, we knew we had a good team coming back, and uh, that's not to sound cocky or anything like that, but uh, we knew we had a good team coming back and there was a lot of possibilities for it. But, you know, our, we know our league is also very, very difficult. And uh, so we were able to navigate the regular season and I thought we were playing our best hockey come playoff. Uh, this was certainly a, a another tough game uh, against AIC. Uh, we had a kill, uh, our penalty killing was outstanding. And then when the power play got its opportunities, uh, we capitalized quickly there as well. So, um, but it went right down to the end and uh, got some empty net goals. And I think the, the, the thing I can say about this team, uh, probably more so than a lot of other teams of coach is just the, uh, the contributions were, they came from everyone. Uh, every, every single night it was something different. So whether it be our captains and, and guys that you're expecting uh, to get production out of, whether our freshmen uh, at the end and goaltending, and it could have been our power play one game, a penalty killing the next game. Our role players, like I said, the, the penalty killers uh, tonight that don't get all the recognition, but uh, these guys go at it every every week in practice real hard. Power play against penalty killing, and the penalty killing win their fair share, and the power play win the other, and uh, they go at it hard, and that's what makes us better is that the internal uh, competition. So really proud of uh, this group and uh, that you set a mission, and, and, and it can also end the uh, not the, as happy as it did today. and. Uh, so now we're looking forward. Uh, you don't know how quick the turnaround is going to be, but we're looking forward to our next challenge and uh, and uh, preparing for that. And uh, we're excited. We're going to enjoy this with our families and, and our teammates. But uh, we know it's going to be another turnaround before we uh, play on a bigger stage. Question. Got a question for, for the three players, uh, guys. Just wondering, you ever won a championship before at any level, and maybe describe kind of your feeling of. Uh, that final horn sounds and you guys are celebrating. Glad you won this uh, Yeah, so I won one. This would have been almost eight years ago in uh, midget hockey, so high school hockey. And, you know, it's very similar to the feeling of it. It's just a really tight group. Obviously, this team is the tightest I've ever been on, and these guys are my best friends. So, you know, that's really all I can say. It's, it's amazing. Uh, no, this is my first time. Came close a couple times in junior, but couldn't get the job done. But, uh, it was super special to do it tonight, and I'm really happy and looking forward for next to next week. Yeah, I know I haven't won a regular a playoff championship in years of my career, maybe even not even once. But uh, like G said over there, it's a special group in here, and uh, winning a trophy like that's impressive. Regular season one's really cool, but this is the one we all chase and want for, and uh, now we're excited for the next step of that NCAA tournament to prove what we can do on a larger scale. So it'll be a good. What prevented? I think we just knew uh, right from the start where we were. Uh, I had a bad turnover on it, and I went to the bench and owned up for it, and told the boys it helped them uh, get it back. But uh, I just think it's a resilient group. Uh, we trust it, and Will touched on that as well. Like we had uh, guys who don't really score, guys depth in our lineup producing. Like Dimitri scoring back-to-back -back games here, it's huge for our team. Like he didn't have a goal until the last two games, but stepped up in the big moments, and I think we got a lot of players in that room who can do that, and it's uh, definitely a special group to be a part of, for sure. Uh, Wayne, you over here uh, yeah. touched on the penalty kill efforts or special team efforts tonight uh, as a team that then go for five tonight. Um, what was so good for, for that you tonight to really limit chances, let alone, let alone goals? Yeah, you know, uh, Dave Insolaco is in charge of our penalty kill, and, and he does a great job, very, very detailed and uh, kind of knows exactly what they're going to be doing and uh, um, you know I think we're ranked in the top five in the country and it's not just it's 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 the guys that are sacrificing and, and making it happen on the ice but it's also the the prep work that they do with Dave and he does a great job with them and um, you know like we're just uh, I don't know how we do it but we end up uh, taking a few penalties every game we play so we've got to be careful because uh, the next team that we play uh, aren't going to be so forgiving and we're not quite as familiar with them so but uh, yeah I, I'd say the guys on the ice do a great job and sacrifice and, and Dave's prep work uh, is, is you know he gives them the guidance that they need to kill it off.
when you guys talked about getting off to a fast start, take a penalty early, give up a goal early, you get to that media timeout, after that you scored two right after that. What was kind of said maybe there to kind of right things and, and get your team back on track? Well, I think it's what Wilk said, you know, he, he came back to the bench. I think, you know, really the players took over the team, I'll be quite honest with you, and uh, um, and it's got to come from them, you know, like it, it, it could be a coach saying, settle down. I, I didn't think we could, we were getting right to our game. We need to try and get to our game. And, and AIC has a lot to say about that. But uh, we, you know, we're a very good forechecking. Uh, we, we turn a lot of pucks over, we create some chances. And, and um, even if you don't score on those, like you want to get the crowd involved. Uh, and uh, a great crowd, I, I, I don't want to miss out on them, but you know, to sell out and all that. It was an exciting environment, but it took us a little longer to get to our game tonight. But um, I think the players settled themselves down and that's what we needed to do is just settle down here and get to our game. They score the last minute of the first to tie it. You get the power play. Start the second period. How big was it? And you know, was it said, all right, let's get this lead back now? These guys. I mean, every time we get a power play, we're trying to score, right? That's the goal. And we've been really focused throughout this week of preparation. So it showed there, right? We worked on that play all week, actually, just trying to outnumber them out in the front of the net. And unfortunately, Maddie put it home. Uh, Matthew, can you take us through the game winner, your first goal, found a way to get open in front of the net? Yeah, we had a good entry there. Um, we got set up, and then uh, Bukesy had it and didn't have a lot of time, and he threw it on net. Like she said, we've been working on it, and then kind of just fell right in my lap, and I was lucky enough to put it home. Quick, quick comment about the power play. The other thing that makes them so successful, and Brian worked with them, is that they don't care who scores. And you know, sometimes you get power plays where an individual wants to be the so-called quarterback and wants everything to go through them and wants it. Like, you know, on that particular play, they were ch cheating up on uh, Gianfranco uh, quite a bit. And we knew that they would, and, and that's why Bukesy got it down was because he just kind of caught them cheating. So Gianfranco's got to sacrifice and be the decoy on, on maybe the power play so that someone else can score. And, and this time it was Matty Wall. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, what happens a little bit when, when you're all unselfish. Otherwise, it never works. I guess to the empty net situation, I mean, are you knowing if you come to center? We can win. It's right here. Yeah, like I said, it's just preparation every single day. I mean, a purpose of mine is to put empty nets in. I know I'm going to be out there. So every day in practice, I'm shooting out empty nets from full ice. I try to get over the red line as best I can, but I'm very confident in my ability to do that. So that was just my preparation there. What goes through your head through your mind as you're waiting for guys to get to you? I don't know. Just try to get it through the guy if there is one. And just put no, no, it... I mean after you scored. Oh, after I scored? I don't know. I was trying to just take it all in. Uh, I was waiting for the guys. Hobbsy was coming in pretty hot, so I just didn't want to get run over. He's pretty, <laughs> he's pretty strong. But uh, yeah, just really happy. I guess for any of the players to start down here, um, you know, it's been eight years since RIT's made it to the NCAA tournament. What does it mean to be part of the team that gets you guys uh, back there, win the uh, conference title here? Uh, it's a special uh, thing, obviously, and uh, you don't realize how hard it is to win, obviously, until like maybe an experience like last year, and that's a learning stone for us uh, with the big group returning and coming back. Like We knew that feeling of not getting there, and uh, I think it's just a special thing. In our walls, it's always up there. You see the pictures of people who won championships and their team and them hosting a the trophy, so it's a constant reminder in the room that that stuff is hard, and that's what you really want to accomplish. And uh, to be a part of the group like that, you, you create a memory like that. You're going to see a guy 30 years down the line, and you'll remember this for the rest of our lives. And it'll keep us as brothers and friends. And uh, like that close knit family that we have here, it's just, it gets heightened all that much. And uh, now we're honored to be the Atlantic team representing Atlantic hockey in the, for on the nat national stadium. And now we're going for another ring. So hopefully we can accomplish that too. Yeah, like Wilk said it, it's, uh, you make lifelong memories, lifelong friendships, so it means a whole lot. Uh, like the freshmen coming in, we knew that in the past years they just fallen short, so. But we knew we had a good team, so coming in, you know, started in August, we all knew we could go win a championship, and we worked at that every day. You know, constant reminders what the goal is, and just, you know, really happy we got it done. One thing I'd add to that, like I'm really proud of this, is that uh, two guys came back, uh, Calvin Boots from Alaska, and uh, Colby Matthews from British Columbia. So pretty big commitment. And uh, you know, to see two guys come back that suffered the, the heartache last year and then come back and just want to be with these guys and uh, root them on, I think that's 
pretty special. I mean, that doesn't happen in a lot of programs. I mean, financially and just their commitment to come back. So I was really uh, part of that. And then I was, I was bugging the guys that are around town, <laughs> the alums that all came in the room after. But that they're really, really proud. Uh, you know, so they, they had their trophy moment, and now they, they just uh, they couldn't be prouder of these guys in their trophy moment. <coughs> Uh, yeah, it's honestly like every year in August we get together, we have a meeting kind of before training camp starts and we talk about the standard and the standards winning championships. Like everyone's recruitment pitch, you hear you're going to come to RIT and you're going to win. And that's what got me here. This place is amazing. It's the best five years of my life. And, you know, it's the standard. I, I talked to Josh Mitchell actually maybe three, four years ago, had a deep conversation with him. I was like, you know, what, what, what did it take? He was a captain on a team that won. And, you know, like Wilk said, it's the pictures are in the room forever. So we're really happy to get ourselves on the wall tonight. Anything else? Kurt, how long do you wear that hat? Uh, I'm not taking this off for a while. I'm probably <laughs> going to sleep in this thing, honestly. And uh, yeah, I'll be rocking it around probably on campus in that shirt that's soaking wet. And I don't know if I'll even wash it. But uh, it's, uh, it's definitely going to stay on for a while. And I'm happy and I'm honored to be wearing this hat. So I'm definitely not taking it off in any time shortly. I'm hoping one week and he's got a different hat to wear and a different <laughs> shirt. But... Thanks, guys. Appreciate Thank it. you.